In this video, we are gonna be installing a fully custom polycarb front lip for my 2014 Mustang. We will go through the entire process of creating and sculpting from what was just once a basic piece of plastic to a more unique piece of plastic. And by the end of this video, not only will you feel like Picasso, I call it bold and brash, but your Mustang will have a sleek an aggressive new look that enhances not only the aesthetics, but let's just hope for some rigged up performance. actually divided this into three different pieces. And the reason why we divided this in three different pieces is because I didn't have enough material to make one whole front lip. We added a piece here and we also added a piece here. Question you may be asking is, brother man, brother man, brother man. How did you add that on here and how do you know where to place it? Well, I actually added super glue and baking soda and placed it at the bottom of the polycarb material. And I just added another piece below it to hold it tightly down. So what we're gonna be doing now, is we're gonna be scraping off all this ink on here because the paint is not gonna stick to this when it's all said and done. And we're gonna have to find contact points. So when we finally have this thing placed up, it's gonna be able to stick to the front lip. So we just got done scraping off all the old, icky, yucky ink on the front lip. Now we're gonna go ahead and start smoothing out the mountains and the roughs and the edges on the front lip. And we're gonna do that by making it look like such a kindergartner's work anymore by using big boy tools. And the big boy tools we're gonna be using is of course a file. <laughs> which this file right here is a lot stronger than the material that we're gonna be cutting into, which makes it great because this will be able to cut exactly the amount that you want out of it without having to use power tools or anything too crazy where you're gonna be digging any more than you need to. We're also gonna be using a sanding block. You get those fine little micro details where it's not cutting so deep like a file would. And we're also gonna be using this jump rope looking piece so it's more of a template so when you do sand around exactly what you need to, you can tell where the high and low spots are. So the method I ended up using here was using super glue and baking soda to make this one whole solid piece. And but not only that, if you were to go to this side, which I haven't done, you'll notice there's a ridge right here where these two pieces connected to one another. Considering this its own one piece, and this is its own one piece, by adding the super glue and the baking soda in between, I was able to transform it from a liquid to a solid. And by making it into a solid, I was able to sand this piece down. And as you can see right here, it ended up making it very smooth. I wanna give you guys a better representation of exactly how this is supposed to look so you guys can get an idea how the final form of this is supposed to be. And as you guys can see right here, we actually mocked up the front lip on below the original splitter that we already have on the car. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna keep the front lips that we currently have on the car and we're just gonna do a double decker style. We're gonna go ahead and paint that clear piece white all the way across the bottom. We're gonna keep the black splitter and then we're also gonna keep that white lip up top to hold everything all together. And I'm really liking how this is turning out so far. I'm a big fan in a way of seeing products in their shitty, 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 shitty stages. When you see them in their final form, it just makes you appreciate the process that much more.
For those of you guys that are questioning why I marked the front lip with Sharpies, because I used the dotted line to know where the front lip lies on the car. So the next time I decide to line up the front lip, I know exactly how to line it up without having to try to fight it and find that happy spot of where it originally was before. Now, as for the other line right here, I used a block that I already knew was flat and there was nothing that's gonna change the way that this block is shaped. And I pushed it up against the front splitter and I just used my Sharpie and wrote it along the splitter to keep a straight line to run all the way across. And what that did was when I used that Sharpie, I knew that right here is a spot I'm gonna have to sand down, keep going all the way around. I knew that this spot was either cut too deep or perfect. And as I get here, I know that this spot needs a little bit more cutting. And clearly as we get around more, you can see how much more we need to cut. So we do have a change of plans and I originally was planning on using this belt, which I had been using for most of the time already, but come to find out that the belt on here as expected is not working up to expectations. This thing literally has no grip on it at all. And you can hear it with my hands that it's not grabbing. And if it doesn't hurt, that means it ain't working. So my next alternative that I'm going to be using, if not have already been using, is this belt sander right here. This has been helping me out a lot, especially when clamping the lip down to the table. We're gonna go ahead and clean this thing up a little bit more, get as many of these scratches out as we possibly can because this thing is looking mighty junky at the moment. We wanna clean it up, make it look good. It's the showpiece. It's what everybody sees the moment you look at the very front of the car. So we gotta make sure this thing looks very, very beautiful. Mwah. work on my car man and you just bothering me it's not Halloween yet So in the last clip, you saw I decided to paint the front splitter black. And the reason why I did it black is because this polycarb material is clear. And I wanted to make sure I had a solid base coat below this. So when I did place the white on there, it would be one solid color and it wouldn't have any patchy spots on it. I completely forgot. This is not a good material to paint on. Yes, the paint sticks on it, but it takes an excessive amount of paint for in order for it to look somewhat decent. And as you guys can see here, this does not look decent at all. If anything, I did a shitty job on it because you can see a lot of runs in the paint. It doesn't look the best. And honestly, there are some patchy spots when you do look at it in the light. And that's the last thing I want on here. And I honestly completely forgot that was one of the main reasons why I decided to go ahead and wrap the side skirts is because paint was not sticking well to it. And as you can see the side skirts, the heat within the Las Vegas sun and also just being outside every single day, 24 hours a day, has not caused any issues on the vinyl at all. And I also did it on the rear balances as well. So I should have known better before I started painting this. That's fine though. We're just gonna go ahead and now wrap it with a white vinyl over the top. Look at this. Look at that. And once we go ahead and put the two side tape on and finally see what it looks like in its final form with all, all that bull crap all around it. Oh my God. <laughs> all this work with just junk we had laying around the garage. This is a remarkable. I am so excited for this. This is so purposeless, but to me, it means everything. I'm just so happy we're able just to grab random scraps out of the garage and make this masterpiece right here. It's a six out of 10 in quality, but let me tell you, it works. What I'm gonna do to make sure that I don't lose track of exactly how I laid this thing out, I'm gonna leave all the clamps all around the front lip, but I'm gonna take them off one at a time to where I'm gonna take off this one, add the two-sided tape, put it back on. I'm gonna take off this one, put two-sided tape on there so I don't lose exactly how I laid this thing out because if I just go ahead and take all this off, put the tape on there, that's gonna be an issue because I run the risk of it not lining up properly and I just wasted all this time wrapping it. Even though it's not the best job, 
I don't wanna do it again. With the little room that I had, this works and this will do for now. For those of you guys that feel like you guys can't do this or this seems like it's too difficult, understand that this is not something that just happens overnight. It takes time, it takes thought, it takes effort, and it definitely takes a lot of patience it seems like I never have, but for whatever reason, whenever it comes to working on my car, when it comes to modifying something, I have all the time in the world to think about it. When it comes to something I gotta fix, drives me fucking nuts. But when it comes to something I have fun with, I sit down, I think about it, I think about how I can make it better, and that's how I made each and every single one of the parts that I have on my car. Goes for the side skirts, goes for the front lip that you currently already saw on the car, and on top of that as well, the rear diffuser that we have. Each one of those things took some effort and it took a little bit of critical thinking in order for us to be able to make it strong, durable, and also at the same time as well, be able to look very, very nice and symmetrical on the car. This is not something that you can just rush through. And if you rush through it, you're definitely gonna see at the very end of the product when it's finally done. Take your time on it. You're gonna realize that all that hard work pays off. Even if you mess up, there's always room to fix it because just remember where you started. You started from scratch. So if you started from scratch and you messed something up, you could definitely make your way back and fix it again. Even if it takes three steps back to take one step forward.